Hello and welcome back to On Chain Reaction. I'm your host, James Bennett, and I'm the CEO of ByteTree. Okay, let's jump right into it. So we're going to start today by looking at volatility, which has been falling since late January. It's currently sitting around 80%, uh, 30 days annualized volatility, as Bitcoin touches $60,000 and has begun now to retrace back towards 54, 55,000 as of Tuesday, the 23rd of March. So we can see here, we've pointed this out before, that this bull run is actually seeing uh, lower volatility than all of the previous peak cycles. That's not to say that we are in a peak, uh, but if you look at the 700% price growth we've seen since March last year, then you know you could be forgiven for thinking that we're near getting closer to a top somewhere. Um, so in the previous cycles, particularly in uh, late 17, and then again what we saw uh, mid uh, 2020, Bitcoin's volatility was up towards 150, 170 uh, percent uh, in the previous sort of bull run, um, and this is indicative of a more mature market with slightly more rational uh, investors and and long-term um, allocators involved this time around. So overall, you know, very high volatility compared to other um, commodities and assets. But for Bitcoin uh, at this stage, uh, it's actually looking pretty promising. Okay, so now diving into the on-chain activity. Well, first thing to recognize is the uh, fees have been, the fees as a percentage of the total revenues have been easing uh, as Bitcoin network activity has been easing as well. Remember, fees are uh, essentially paid for block space. So higher fees means there's higher competition and higher demand for block space. Um, and there was an uptrend that we've been uh, visit, revisiting um, on these uh, Coin Scrum on chain reaction videos. Since January 2020, we can see that uptrend began. Uh, the gold line there indicating uh, the fees as a percentage of revenues. And in the last sort of couple of months, we've had a, a sharp correction down from about 17% to about 12%. Now, that 12% is still, if you look at the far side, right hand side of the chart is still a higher low than what we saw in sort of end of January um, but it does appear to be easing so this is something we're looking at very closely uh, again fees are indicative of network demand okay so then going straight into uh, total settlement value so how much is being uh, sent and received over the Bitcoin network um, we've seen that um, on-chain volume pushed up to about $14.14 billion per day uh, in late February uh, and has currently sort of retraced to that $8 billion level. Again, on the right-hand side of the graph, you're looking at the black dotted line. And you can see how we've had a couple of lows um, tested at around $8 billion, and that's where we're sitting at at the moment. Um, strongly follows price, generally, since this is a Bitcoin value transferred at the dollar rate. Uh, but when we see that divergence between price and on-chain activity, we know that on-chain activity is actually falling away whilst price is increasing. Uh, again, indicative of a, a slower or a lower uh, secondary market demand on Bitcoin. Okay, so that's what's happening on-chain um, in terms of the demand. But what about off-chain? So you know, a big story at the moment is the fund flows uh, in the US. The story is around Grayscale, which started trading at a discount. Grayscale then um, announced that they would invest or buy back $250 million worth of GBTC um, shares in order to try to return their product back to net asset value. Um, and, you know, there's a, the, th the thing about the US funds is it's difficult to uh, really get a flavor for changing sentiment um, outside of the looking at the premium discount because the, a lot of them are closed-ended funds, which means that Bitcoin can only go in. So Grayscale has about $40 billion of Bitcoin, and in fact, they can't sell those uh, at the moment based on their sort of mandate. Um, so you know, if people want to sell uh, GBTC, then we move to a, a discount, which is what we've seen. But the Bitcoin won't leave the fund. It's a one-way ticket. Uh, that is that particular instrument but in the European sector uh, we have you know better liquidity uh, investors can put money in and then they can take money out again 
So therefore, you can see uh, when you know investors are taking out their money, then the total Bitcoin that's invested in those funds is dropping. So you know, it, European uh, flows because of the different products, right? We're looking at exchange traded products as opposed to closed end investment funds uh, in the US. Um, these are more liquid instruments. So we can see here the um, you know the, the trend has been very much positive uh, since well I mean since records began so mid January uh, sorry mid 15 I should say at the time it was mostly just the XBT product from coin shares and since you know then we've seen a lot of new entrants including 21 shares Ham Banek Wisdom Tree um, and and the likes um, and you know still we're seeing positive uh, inflows particularly. Uh, since sort of Q3, Q4 last year. We're looking at this closely. Um, I think if European fund flows start to drop off, particularly if they start to go negative, uh, you can see in sort of Jan 17 and December 17 um, in particular, and then early sort of Jan 20, oh, sorry, March 20, which was that liquidity crunch event, you can see when fund flows dropped uh, and the impact that they had on price. So that's definitely a metric to look at closely. Okay, so next up, we're going to look at the miners side. Um, so miners are selling less Bitcoin uh, at the moment with their miners rolling inventory, uh, which is a metric we developed at ByteTree to track miner sentiment uh, is trending back towards 100%. So when MRI is above 100%, it means for every new Bitcoin, well, it means they're selling more Bitcoin than what they're generating. Uh, so their net inventory is declining. Uh, when MRI is below 100%, it means they're mining more than they're selling. So their net inventory is increasing. We can see that miners typically sell heavily into strong uh, market bid. So when the price is going up, they sell heavily. And we can see that particularly since the beginning of this year. Um, I think we've touched on this before, but MRI peaked at 165%. So they're selling 65% more than they've been mining. How do they do that? They've been sitting on it in their inventory. Uh, but since we hit that peak price um, in, well, actually, okay, the first peak that we saw uh, towards the end of February, they've really been holding back, waiting perhaps for a stronger price, waiting perhaps uh, for a, another cycle. Um, it's a bit too early to say exactly uh, what their motives are here. Um, but we can look at the historic uh, trend from miners' inventories to get a better feel for what they might be indicating to us. Uh, so here we're looking at miner inventories over the last eight, nine years. Um, and you know there's a very clear sort of high level picture, which is that during bull markets, inventories get depleted heavily. So the rate of inventory decline is accelerated during those periods and you can see highlighted in green in the sort of 13 to late 13 and then uh, late 16 to late 17 cycles um, the blue line there indicates the Bitcoin inventories and in both cases you know there's a real change in, uh, in pace that they're offloading their inventories and then as soon as they stop um, selling heavily and you can see particularly in Jan 14 and then sort of Jan February 18 uh, there's a, another change in pace inventories start building and their price starts to weaken and fall and we move into that bear market so I'm not saying that that's where we are at the moment but if we look at the next slide here zooming in uh, we can see that miners have started to consolidate their positions since the beginning of March so December late December through January and February, we can see that really strong, steep sell-off. Um, and then the blue line on the far bottom right of this chart, we can see it started to level off and taper. Um, it indicates at the moment, you know, miners are uncertain about the future. Can they get a better price you know, a few months from now? Um, or you know, should they just be offloading their inventory at the moment? I think it's a little bit too early to call a top. Uh, but I would say that you know we're looking at these metrics very closely, uh, in particular you know the fund flows and MRI uh, on the Byte Tree terminal. Um, okay, that's all for me for now. As always, if you have any questions, then do reach out at james at bytetree.com, and I'd be happy to chat with you about any of the metrics that we've seen today. That's all. Goodbye.